This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This is the Rock Cycle. This is a quick overview of the rocks, the processes, and how things flow throughout the cycle. Now, we always start with, well, for me personally, lava and magma in this oval box at the bottom. And we can discuss the magma and lava as molten, as a liquid of various viscosity and certain temperature. And that corresponds to the certain depth and the pressures that it is under because it is underground. So you can also add in a, uh, a new line right here, a new arrow, new process right here. And any line that is uh, going to um, lava and magma, this oval shape is going to be melting as a process. And you can discuss the difference in melting at certain temperatures with certain minerals. Okay, now if we're going to cool it, we're going to form an igneous rock. When you cool the lava or magma at different speeds, you're going to reduce the thermal energy and go from a liquid to a solid. And you get in two processes. One is consolidation and one is crystallization. The uh, latter is the physical formula of minerals and consolidation is the fact of making something solid, which is the igneous rock. So based on now which two types of igneous rock you have, you have ext extrusive, means it comes from lava, so it's only on the surface. If it's intrusive, it'll be um, magma derived and it'll be inside the Earth's crust, lithosphere, or upper mantle. And you have to have some sort of uplift or tectonics that's going to bring that intrusive igneous rock up to the surface. Now on the surface, it'll be exposed to the elements based on surface area, based on climate, latitude, altitude, weather patterns, you name it. So the elements are going to act upon this rock. You're going to have a degree of both mechanical, physical or chemical weathering and also different agents of erosion working on that rock to break it down into smaller pieces called sediments. And based on the size, if it's classic, chemical, organic, and these sediments will be transported and moved through erosional processes and also weathered again. And they will form our next rock, which is called sedimentary. Now put a number two in there to show that it's the second rock kind of formed in this kind of cycle. Igneous is the first. So sedimentary rock can be clastic. It can be organic or chemical based on the sediments that it's derived from. And the transformation of sediments into sedimentary rock is uh, through a process of diagenesis, through a step-by-step -step, uh, process of um, compaction, sedimentation, deposition, different environments, different sizes and sorting agents, and it will basically end up with the process of lithification. And you get this sedimentary rock now in various environments. So then if we get the uh, sedimentary rock to be uh, placed or put down uh, through various uh, processes and tectonics uh, whereby this rock has now gone deeper into the ground and you've gone through diagenesis now you get into something called metamorphism which is over 200 degrees celsius and 300 megapascals of pressure so a lot of heat loss of pressure and you're going to uh, change the form and the shape of this rock and form a metamorphic rock and again the third rock in us in our cycle and the two types is foliated and non-foliated. Now, this is based on various grades, between low, intermediate, and high, based on the temperature and the pressure. And if it gets too high and the, uh, the temperature goes above, let's say, uh, around 800 degrees Celsius, roughly as, a, as a, a, a starting point, then we go into that process of melting again of various minerals, and we go back to our lovely lava and magma based on certain depth, temperature, and pressure underground. And again, any arrow that's going towards metamorphic rock will be the process of metamorphism. So from igneous and you bury it deeper down, you get metamorphism, which causes a metamorphic rock to be created. And also, if you have any arrow going towards sediments, then it would be weathering and erosion to create the sediments, uh, which will then go into, again, diagenesis and form again uh, a new sedimentary rock. Also, you can have from here an arrow back there, again, which will be weathering and erosion back into sediments. So as an overview, to form lava and magma, the liquid molten version of rock with minerals and gases and dissolved uh, quantities and uh, volatiles, you need to have a melting process of that rock. Going to form igneous, it has to be from lava and magma, it has to be through cooling and other processes. Then uh, to get onto the surface, you create sediments through weather and erosion, 
and uh, the elements being acting on this rock and then sediments are going to form sedimentary rocks. So you have to form sediments before you form sedimentary rocks. So metamorphic again is only formed through metamorphism which is the burial and deposition and uh, uh, tectonic activity causing that um, rock to be buried deeper in higher pressures and temperatures to form this kind of rock. So again, this is a very uh, simplistic version, but can you can go on to more complex and more detailed processes which go into creating this beautiful rock site. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on Earth Science.